But that being said, at this point I am almost late for this tournament, so I've got to run. Day two. Day two of the PPO main event, $2,700 buy-in, 500k guarantee, ended up having 264 entries, took us just one bullet, thankfully, to uh, make it on to day two. If you guys haven't checked out the day one video, I will leave a card up for you so you can check it on out. Uh, definitely want to check that one out before watching this one. A lot of good hands from that episode. Some fortunate runouts. And uh, also some fortunate results in terms of people just kind of doing the thing that worked out best for me. Also some unfortunate results as well, but uh, we're going to be moving right along here into day two. Just as a quick reminder, I will be at Foxwoods coming up very shortly here for the Moneymaker Tour stop there. And uh, then coming on back to Maryland for the WPT at Maryland Live. Then the meetup game is on the 30th of September, so definitely hope to see you there. Uh, Facebook event down in the description below. Uh, make sure you RSVP if you're going to show up. And let me know if you're going to want a hotel. That way I can uh, get an accurate count uh, for them to lock some hotels up for Sunday night. So right away I just want to mention that making day two in a buy-in like this is definitely important and it is a milestone but we kind of have to keep in mind that making day two does not guarantee you a spot in money and even making day two with a pretty good stack same thing uh nothing's nothing's guaranteed uh, except for i guess the prize pool and you don't want to take for granted when you make day two that you're gonna make it uh, the caliber of play on day two is also pretty likely to be you know higher than on day one just because the slower levels really allow a lot of the better players to make it on through um, kind of at a higher frequency than they normally would in a faster structure a more turbo type event so with that in mind, I was really excited to make day two in this event after uh, breaking all the PPO events prior, but uh, I wanted to keep kind of a level head on my shoulders and just come in and try to continue playing reasonably good poker. So early on coming into the day, I managed to chip up. Uh, I, I didn't write down any hands prior to this one, uh, but I am up to a stack of 380k after coming into the day with 265k. So I actually wake up in the hijack with pocket aces, pretty good hand to see. Uh, I bump it up to 18k and the cutoff, who has jammed quite a few times already today, uh, goes all in for 100k. Folds back around to me and obviously have aces, even if he wasn't jamming a lot this would be a call. Uh, so I put the money in and he's got the king 10 of diamonds. The board comes down jack, jack, 5, 7, brick. And uh, the, the river doesn't even matter because he's drawing dead by the turn. Uh, nice to kind of just get an easy scoop up there to break 500k. With 500k in my stack, middle position limps, and I'm on the button with ace king of hearts, and I bump it up to 35k. Middle position makes the call, and we go heads up to a flop, which is a kind of weird one for this exact hand. 964 all spades. When he checks to me, I guess I could check it back, and I'm usually giving up if that's the case, but I figured I could... Um, just kind of one and done it or play it by ear after a c-bet if it didn't work. I end up betting 30k and he calls. I think I should be giving up at this point but when the turn was an eight of hearts and he checked again I just kind of decided to bet again. I, I don't feel like I really had a good reason for this. Uh, I didn't write down anything special in my notes and I think we really should be giving up here a lot but I did decide to bet 55k and he called once again. The river was now a jack of spades and he checks again. At this point, I don't really expect to be able to get him off of many spade X hands, but it's a little bit weird that he doesn't lead out if he did have a really good spade. So I really went back and forth on this river, um, but ultimately did decide to give up. And he shows me pocket sixes for a flopped set. So kind of unfortunate that uh, I didn't just go for it given I think he's probably folding this hand to most reasonable sizings, but is what it is. Now at the 5k, 10k blind level with a 1k ante, I've got 430k in my stack and there are two limps to me. I'm in the small blind with ace eight offsuit and I decided to just complete. 
I don't think raising a hand this week is necessarily going to be profitable, but getting the price that I'm getting with a reasonable ace in the small blind when other people aren't likely to have better ace X uh, is a pretty reasonable defend. The big blind checks his option, so we go four ways to a flop, which is ace, jack, deuce, rainbow. Checks to middle position who bets 20k. Cutoff calls, I call, and we're going three ways to a turn. The turn is now a queen, and when I check, middle position, who had bet the flop, checks, and the cutoff bets 50k. It's kind of a weird situation where, even though on paper my hand is pretty strong and fairly underrepped, I didn't feel that great about the situation because I thought a lot of the weak ace-x would just check behind here, take, take a river card, and kind of see what played out. I was pretty worried about two pair that limped in instead of raising, but it's pretty hard to put people on ace jack and ace queen when they just limp or over limp. But I did end up calling, uh, being pretty sure I was just going to fold to any river bets. And middle position actually calls behind as well, which is also kind of weird. The river ends up coming another queen, so we now chop with every single ace x except for ace queen and ace king which may or may not be a good card at this point. I was primarily worried about ace-deuce uh, on this run out and ace-jack, and we now chop with both of those, which is pretty good. But somehow it checks around. Um, I show, and the cutoff somehow shows pocket deuces. I was absolutely blown away by this. I didn't think he could even you know, ha have this the way it played out, uh, especially when he checks river. But again, it's just kind of a spot where... I was really close on a decision and uh, just kind of didn't go my way, but I think it's okay how I played it. Um, definitely a little bit monster under the bed uh, syndrome kind of situation with him checking behind with uh, a boat. With blinds at 6k, 12k, and now a 2k Annie, I've got 450k in my stack, and the button, who has 350k, opens to 30k off of that stack. I'm in the small blind with ace-queen offsuit, and I do decide to go for a 3-bet uh, against this player, uh, a competent regular, I'm, I'm planning to get it in. So I make it 80k, and he ends up making the call, which is a little surprising. The flop comes queen high, and even though it's queen high board and like some cards can come that I'm not excited about, because it's rainbow, I felt like I didn't necessarily need to protect, and there were so few high cards that it's unlikely he's gonna to improve to a better hand that often. There's also so little behind compared to what's in the pot that I decided to check and probably just check jam if I get bet into um, or just go bet on the turn. He ends up checking behind on the flop and when the turn is a six of spades, I thought that I maybe look the bluffiest by just jamming rather than going for two bets now. So I just go all in, uh, but he ends up folding I don't really know if I like my jam here. I think two small streets uh, with the river being an all-in might be better, but I just felt at the time like he might kind of show up here with tens and nines a lot and try to kind of hero put me on ace king and just call off. But instead we just take this one down and chip up a little bit here. With blinds up once again at the 8k, 16k level, uh, 2k and he's still in play, I have 500k in my stack. And I wake up with pocket aces once again in middle position. I bump it up to 40k, which is kind of the standard size of the table still. Uh, the big blind is the only caller. The flop comes down 864, all clubs, and he checks. Now, given that I have the ace of clubs in my hand, I don't necessarily have to bet this 100% of the time, but we have a decent amount of chips behind, so I kind of wanted to start building the pot now. I bet 60k and he doesn't think that long and just jams. I was pretty taken aback by this. Uh, I, I played several hands with this player and um, he was certainly capable of doing some kind of wild things, but when he put a lot of money in like this, I expected him to kind of have it much more often than not. The other tricky part about this hand is that having the ace of clubs is a little bit of a double-edged sword. He can't have the nut flush draw, which is one of the bluffs that I would like him to have available to him. Uh, but it also means I have a redraw against any made flushes or sets that he does have. So at the end of the day, even though the price I'm getting is pretty bad, I think this hand is just too strong. We're getting close to the money, but 
you can't really avoid spots like this in tournaments. You kind of just have to take them sometimes and hope for the best. So I tank and eventually call, and he turns over a hand that I'm actually in pretty amazing shape against, which is pocket fives with a club. So he does have a gut shot. He does have a set draw, uh, but that's all he has, and it's not going to be good enough because the turn is a four, and the river is an eight, and we double through to break a million for the first time of the day. Um, pretty crucial pot heading into uh, the money bubble and really is a big part of what allows me to kind of play with confidence going through the next few hands. In the same blind level, we have about 900k at this point and open in the cutoff to 38k uh, with king eight of spades. At certain stages of the tournament, I might not open King Eight of Spades from the cutoff. In fact, in the early stages, I probably wouldn't. But with so much dead money and people really wanting to make it into the money, uh, th this is this is you know like a 5.3k bubble or something like that. It's a pretty big deal. Uh, I felt like I could start opening it up with the stack that I had. Uh, that being said, yes, I, I know I said it. Uh, the big blind calls and we go heads up to a flop of four three deuce rainbow. He checks, and I definitely could see bet this board, but I felt like with King High, I actually had a decent amount of showdown value. Um, there's just so few hands either of us are going to have that are going to connect hard with this board. Plus, the hands that he does have, like Ace High, are gut shots and not going away. Um, so I didn't necessarily think I was going to get a ton of better hands to fold by betting. So I check it behind, and the turn's actually an 8, which gives us top pair. There's also a flush draw on board now, but uh, not super concerned with that since no bets went in on the flop. It, it doesn't necessarily change much for us here. He actually leads out for 50k, and we have top pair, so pretty easy call. Um, the river's a queen of clubs, though, and he bets again, 125k. Pretty quickly um, and pretty confidently, but I just kind of felt like with the exact runout as it was and with the fact that he'd have to basically bluff turn with a queen high hand and then make a queen on the river to be value betting or have something like uh you know a two pair hand or a straight to value bet i just felt like there were so many available bluffs that i could just pretty confidently call here and uh accept the result particularly with the chips i had behind so I make the call, and he just has Jack-7 offsuit for um, pretty much a total airball bluff. Um, gotta admire his heart going for it, although I'm not sure how many folds I'm going to have in that spot against his exact line. So over the course of the day, we have been whittling down the players from, uh, you know, the like 100 or so that made it through, uh, all the way down to now the money bubble. So 264 entries in this tournament. 27 will pay and that's actually a pretty big bubble because a lot of tournaments these days are now starting to pay out 12 15 even 20 percent sometimes so to only pay roughly 10 percent in the field uh you know the bubble is actually very close to being 2x the buy-in and with a 2.7k buy-in 5280 bucks it's a big deal so we're on the exact money bubble uh, a lot of people are short it ends up actually folding all the way around to the small blind who jams just two bigs. And I'm in the big blind. I don't even look at my cards. I just call blind because it's only a big blind more. Uh, I'm getting plenty good of a price from the middle. And I turn over 9-4 offsuit, which is obviously not an ideal hand. But somehow I'm actually ahead because the small blind has 8-3 offsuit. And... I don't even improve in the hand, but my hand ends up playing on a board of bricks and we officially burst the money bubble, chip up a hair, and uh, we've kind of crossed that barrier, uh, made it to the real first achievement of the day. So beyond making day two, actually getting into the money, um, particularly in the biggest tournament that I've played since the World Series, definitely feels good. Now with the blinds at 12k, 24k, we've got a 3k Annie in play. I have about 1.3 million in my stack, so sitting very pretty here. The hijack, who is a competent player, opens to 55k. The button tank jams 150k. Now, 
I'm in the big blind with pocket tens, and even though the button's been pretty tight, I think his stack size just dictates that he can't be only jam jamming really good hands here. He has to have some amount of somewhat light rejams. So I'm not super worried about him, but I was trying to figure out if I should ever be calling here, if I should be raising, and I came to the conclusion that it would be better to kind of exercise my stack and try to get isolation by re-raising. Because I think a lot of times if I call, uh, the hijack is just gonna call behind and we're gonna have to play some kind of tricky spots out of position. So I bump it up pretty small, uh, not quite the minimum that I could make it, but pretty small, less than 2X the buttons all in. I make it 275K and the hijack doesn't even think that long and just jams in 1.1 million. Now, this is a spot where I think a competent player is going to have ace-king. He might even occasionally have ace-queen, but I think more often than not, he's going to have jacks plus. And I think it's super likely he just snap folds nines and below. So we're looking at a situation where we have to put in a ton of lines to basically just hope that he has ace-king. I think most players will not have ace-queen here, and I wasn't sure if he'd even do this with ace-king, especially so quickly. It just, it wasn't really a decision for him. So I end up finally folding after sticking in, you know, a pretty sizable portion of my stack, but it ended up being the right fold when the hijack has pocket queens, and the button actually has aces. So the board ends up coming down. I mean, it's irrelevant what the board is because I, I folded, but it is kind of nice to know because uh, the board is king-nine-deuce, Jack, seven. So we would not have gotten there. Um, again, we want to be decision focused, decision oriented rather than results oriented. But in a tournament this big, uh, where there's, the results really are gonna really gonna start to matter, uh, it was kind of nice to get away from it here and also see that I wouldn't have just pinked it off. So at this point in the tournament, we have whittled down from 27, which was what we hit the money with, all the way down to 14. As you can imagine, it took a while to get from maybe 30 players down to 27, but it was kind of fast and furious from 27 down to about 14 or so. And, uh, you know, it just kind of happens that way because people get pretty short leading up to the bubble. So the min cash was 5,280, and at 21 players left, we actually hit a jump to 6,600. At, I believe, 18 players left, we hit another pay jump to 8,250. So we are starting to get to fairly reasonable jumps now. At 15 players left, we hit a jump to lock up $9,900, so just about 10K. And we are now, with 14 players left, looking at a pay jump from this spot to 12, uh, from 9,900 up to 11,500 or so. So at this point, we're at 15K, 30K, now the 4K ante, and I have 1.5 mil in my stack. I open ace-king obviously under the gun to 70k, which is, again, kind of the standard here. The big blind defends with about a million behind, so we cover him by a fair bit. This is also a pretty competent player, and as I said, the field is really starting to get tough now. Uh, with the pretty good structure that we're in, it just favors the better players, and uh, a lot of the players who remain are like 2-5 pros, 5-10 regs, and a lot of them are pretty competent when it comes to tournament poker as well. So anyway, we're heads up to the flop against the big blind, who is confident, and the flop comes queen, five, deuce, all clubs. I've got the ace of clubs in my hand, so this is a pretty fortunate flop when it comes to, uh, you know, what we could hope to hit with this hand. The big blind checks, and when I bet 90k, he calls reasonably quickly. Not super ideal to have him call, even though this is a pretty good board for us, but the king of clubs on the turn is perfect. I mean... That gives us the nuts. Um, it The only thing that's sort of awkward about it is that he can't now have like a king high flush draw, but it's pretty easy for him to have a hand like queen jack or king jack with the jack of clubs. And it seems like if he has a flush, we're getting at least one more street out of him, sometimes two big streets. So when he checks again, I bet 235k, which I don't know if I really love the sizing. I think I slightly prefer a bigger sizing so that we can maybe set up jams on the river, but I don't mind doing this if we're also gonna have some bluffs on the river. He ends up calling the 235K, so we go heads up to the river, which is just a total brick. 
I wasn't super worried about the board pairing, but this is basically the ideal river. So when he checks it over to me, I do just decide to jam, hoping that I can maybe cooler the uh, Jack X hands that he can have where he has the Jack of Clubs. He tanks a really long time and probably like a minute or two into the break, and so almost everyone's gone from the table. He does actually end up folding though, so good fold from him. Don't really know what he had or what he would tank so long with. It kind of feels like he maybe had something like the Ten of Clubs in his hand, which is a little bit unfortunate. Probably could have gotten paid off at a smaller size, but I don't really feel bad uh, just going for gold there. Now at the 20k, 40k level, we've got a 5k Annie in play and 2 million in my stack. I open the button with pocket 3s to 90k and the big blind jams 290k. I call it off because he just has so few big blinds, but he somehow has pocket 10s and the board is 987, all spades, another 7, and then a queen. So we never really had a hope at it, never even had a flush draw, but you know, with so little to call off, we didn't really have a choice there. It's also worth pointing out at this point that because there's only 13 or 14 players left, uh, you know, we we are sitting seven handed uh, at this point. So a lot of the requirements, hand requirements kind of go down. You kind of have to remain a little more active to stay relevant uh, with the blinds and nannies chipping away. So in this next hand, I've got 1.8 million in my stack and we are seven handed. On the gun opens to 125K with 550K back. Um, and I make the call with pocket eights in the cutoff. It's kind of a weird spot because we don't have immediate odds to set mine, but I feel like eights is just too strong seven-handed, and this guy has been pretty patient, but I feel like his patience is kind of wearing a little bit thin. The flop comes ace, eight, seven, rainbow, and he just instantly goes all in. I obviously snap call, and he is drawing super thin with ace, five of clubs. The turn brings basically a super sweat. It's the nine of clubs, so he now has a gut shot to the nine high straight, and he's also got the nut flush draw. So kind of a lot of drama here, but the river just ends up bricking out completely, and that knocks us down from 14 players to 13 left. From 13 players left down to nine took a while. We ended up consolidating the tables at uh, 10 handed, but we got from 10 handed to 9 handed in just like one or two hands and just like that we made the final table. There wasn't much to speak of during this time because most of the hands I won were just pre-flop raise and take it's or raise pre-flop and c bet flop but I ended up bagging 2.7 mil which was a very narrow chip lead to come into the final table. It was something like 2 in the morning and we got to go home, rest, and come in at about 2 p.m. the next day for the final table. At the final table, uh, I had an okay table draw as far as like my seat, but obviously at this point in the tournament, everybody's pretty confident.